Now we all have a choice. We can live in darkness, allowing evil to enter our lives and unwillingly support the work of Satan and his fallen angels. Or we can let Jesus into our hearts and be spiritually saved forever. There are no prerequisites, rituals, or tests for accepting this gift of salvation. All one needs to do is ask honestly for Jesus to come into their heart. Remember these truths. God loves you. God cares about you. God wants nothing more than to know you personally and save you. Sin separates people from each other and God. Jesus died for your sins and rose again. You can receive Jesus now and know God's love right at this very moment. I pray for you all and hope the truth will indeed set you free. Thanks for your time. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. I think in conclusion, I'd like to appeal to those people that have been researching this for any length of time, specifically long periods of time, maybe even years. To you, I don't think this is going to require a lot of convincing. I think that subconsciously you know that a lot of what was said here is true. I think that you have seen over the years a lot of conclusions about what the New World Order is and what their motives are. And I know that you know that it doesn't really explain all the loose ends and tie them all up. I think that you know, after kicking down so many doors in New World Order research and seeing those that truly expose the New World Order, this theme, that it is in fact theistic Satanism behind those doors. I know that you've seen that. You've seen that they are high-level occultists that really run this show than that are in the shadows. And that even those front men at the very tops are only front men. And that the real movers and shakers are those that hold very dedicated beliefs about the worship of Satan. So we even have this idea that that somehow doesn't apply. We have a phrase that we'll say, which is, it doesn't matter what you believe, the fact is that they believe it, which sort of means, yeah, sure, they're all occultists at the top, but it doesn't really matter. They just, they're just sort of deluded. And I think that's a very dangerous position because if you actually are saying there that it doesn't matter, it's not actually true, there isn't really a Satan and there isn't really a power that, that they're serving, then we should just, again, think that this scenario has something to do with whatever we make it out to be. It certainly can't be about a cosmic war of good and evil because we've already decided that that can't be true. Yet at the same time, we're pointing out that these people are knowingly worshiping Satan, which is something that the Bible has said has gone on from the very beginning. The kings and queens of all the old systems were always sacrificing their children to various gods and Moloch and, and these types of things. And they are still doing it today and are gaining power from it. The problem with believing that is it makes too much sense that all of this energy with the New Age preachers and teachers and truth movement icons and gurus are doing mainly two things. One, they're promoting this idea of a New Age coming in which you're going to be God and you're going to be evolved and, and, and all the obvious stuff that's preparing you for the system of the Antichrist. And the other part of that is they're telling you that Jesus isn't good, you shouldn't pay attention to him, or at least they're trying to misdirect you, tell him he's just this other guy, he's not really who the Bible says he is, or they're trying to discredit the Bible. There's only two things that these guys are doing. They're telling you and preparing you for the new system that you're going to think is your utopia. And then they're telling you to not pay any attention to the man that the Bible said would crush the one that these people at the top are worshiping. Does anybody see a problem with that? That we've been told what to think about the Bible and Jesus Christ by Satanists. The problem here is that what we've been told and what we've been prepared to believe is all what we would choose to believe. It's all very seductive. They're telling you that you can be as God. They're telling you that there is no real accountability for your actions, that anything that you want to do is good and normal and, and, and should be praised. These ideas are very difficult to resist. Truth really is irrelevant at that point because we will fight to defend those ideas regardless of if they are true or not. And that's why there's so many conflicting quote-unquote truths in the New Age and in the truth movement. You know, that's why the first thing that you're taught in the truth movement is that truth is relative. Oh, it doesn't matter. Your truth is just as good as my truth. And we'll fight to defend this completely erroneous idea. I've got news for you. It doesn't matter what way the universe operates. The fact is, is that it does operate one particular way cause and effect in a clear
closed system. We are dealing with absolute truth. Maybe yours, maybe mine, but it is absolute and it is one. We should be concerned about looking for the truth. And I suggest to all you researchers out there that you already have enough evidence to know that Jesus Christ is who he says that he is. You owe it to yourself to figure out more about him the way the Bible says that he is. Not the way that the New World Order says that he is, but the way the Bible says that he is. The Bible has been continually discredited. You're told not to listen to it. You're told not to pay attention to it. They do everything under the sun to keep you from it. They always have. So why don't you just realize that and take the time and figure out who is Jesus according to the Bible?